Today, we're going to look at this really interesting equality that looks at the determinant of the exponential of a matrix and shows that it's actually equal to E raised to the trace of that matrix. Now, these seem to be not related whatsoever, so it's curious that this is even a fact. And just as a reminder, or as an introduction, the exponential of a matrix is equal to the power series expansion of e to the x with the matrix A plugged in for the value of x. So to start off, what we're going to do is make a little bit of an observation. So if you have a matrix A, you can always write it as P, J, P inverse, where J is a matrix that actually has the eigenvalues of A on its diagonal, potentially with some other stuff, and is upper triangular. So there's zeros everywhere below the diagonal. So this is actually very beneficial because if you're trying to compute the determinant of such a matrix, you can just take the product of the diagonal entries because of the fact that it is an upper triangular matrix. This form of writing the matrix A is called the Jordan canonical form. And it actually has more details to it about what the structure of this upper part looks like. But I'm omitting those details. But the benefit for us from the Jordan canonical form is that on the diagonal, we will have the eigenvalues with possible multiplicities in it. So before looking at the determinant of this entire exponential, let's take a look at just the determinant of powers of A because they show up in this summation. So if you look at A to the K, that's equal to this PJP inverse times PJP inverse all the way times PJP inverse, where we have K copies of this factor PJP inverse. Now something really interesting happens when you look at this product. You might notice that this P inverse and this P multiply together to give you an identity matrix. And then you'll have the same thing with P inverse and the P that's next to it. And this cascades. And so what you're left with is P and then J to the K because there's K copies of J in this entire product. And then multiplied by P inverse. So this happens for any non-negative integer K. So let's keep that in the background because it'll be useful when we actually try to compute this determinant. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the determinant of e to the a now. So the determinant of e to the a is going to be the determinant of this expansion that we saw here, which is the sum k equals 0 to infinity of 1 over k factorial times a to the k. But now we're going to use this substitution right over here to write this slightly different as p j to the k times p inverse. So this is p j to the k p inverse. Now you notice we can factor a p on the left of this entire product, and we'll have the sum k equals 1 to infinity of j to the k all over k factorial. And then we can factor out a p inverse on the right. So this determinant will turn out to be the determinant of p times the determinant of this entire sum, k equals 0 to infinity j to the k over k factorial, and then times the determinant of p inverse. And the reason for this is that the determinant of a product of matrices is equal to the product of the determinants of those individual matrices. Okay, so it's a standard fact that the product of the determinant of a matrix and its inverse is equal to 1. You don't even have to think about it as a standard fact. In fact, if you take these two quantities, you can recognize, because they're actual real numbers, that you can move this expression over to the side. And so the determinant of P times the determinant of P inverse will actually be the determinant of their product, which is the determinant of that identity, which is actually 1. Okay, so the thing we're left with then is the determinant of this matrix right over here. Okay, but we actually have some information about what this thing looks like. The matrix J looks like this. So because of the fact that it is upper triangular, if you take any power of this matrix, the diagonals will still maintain their values but be raised to the K. 
There may be some other jargon that's over here that we don't know, and then we'll have zeros along the diagonal. So if we look at this particular sum, as a matrix, it's going to look something like the following. We're going to have the determinant of some very large matrix whose entries look like 1 over k factorial multiplied by a matrix whose diagonal entries have these eigenvalues raised to the k and the zeros all along the bottom corner below the main diagonal. So if we add up all of these constituent matrices, what do we get? We're left with the determinant of a huge matrix whose entries look like what? Well, let's look at the first entry just in this right corner. We're adding up this quantity right here, lambda 1 to the k over k factorial, from k equals 0 to infinity. So we'll take a side note right over here and do that calculation. We have the sum k equals 0 to infinity, lambda 1 to the k divided by k factorial. Aha, uh -huh. but we notice this is actually the power series expansion of e to the x, evaluated at x equals lambda 1. This power series converges for all values of x that's put into it. So this thing actually turns out to be e to the exponent lambda 1. So by a similar light, what we'll have in the diagonal entries is e to the lambda 1, e to the lambda 2, and e to the lambda k. And then we'll have some stuff above the diagonal and zeros below the diagonal. And so the determinant of this matrix is the product of these diagonal entries, which looks something like this. We'll write it in gray right over here. It's e to the lambda 1 times e to the lambda 2 times, etc., e to the lambda sub k. And we should be careful here that this is e to the lambda n. It's an n by n matrix here. And so this here is going to be lambda sub n. N. Okay, and writing this in a more compact form, we get e to the lambda 1 plus lambda 2, etc., up to lambda n. So let's keep this sum here in our minds for the actual value of debt e to the a, and then come back to this question of why that equals e to the trace a. Okay, so through our computations, we've shown that this quantity is exactly e to the sum of the eigenvalues of the matrix. So we need to show that that's equal to e to the trace of the matrix, or in other words, we need to know that the trace of the matrix A that we started with is equal to this thing right over here. Well, let's go back to this observation that we made, that the matrix A can be written as a matrix P times J times P inverse, where P is some invertible matrix, and J is this Jordan canonical form right over here. So the trace of the matrix A is the same as the trace of the matrix P, J, P inverse. All right, now there's this interesting fact that if you take the trace of two matrices that are multiplied together, it doesn't matter what order you multiply them in. So I'll take one of the matrices to be this matrix P right over here and the other one to be this right over here. Then the trace of P times J, P inverse is gonna be the same as the trace of JP inverse times P. Now, observing that we have P inverse times P here, we can multiply those together to get the identity. And then the thing that we're left with is the trace of the matrix J. Now, what is the trace of J? It's the sum of the, uh, the diagonal elements of J. That's what trace is. And so this is equal to lambda one plus lambda two all the way to plus lambda n. Okay, so e to the trace a then is actually exactly the quantity that we recognized as being the determinant of e to the a. So this is a cool, fascinating use of the Jordan canonical form in order to establish this very cool identity relating the determinant of the exponential of a matrix to the trace of the matrix itself.